And Ray, as the editor of the Art of Living series, I think what I've, I hope we've achieved is um, to really take this word art seriously. Because um, I sense that we live in a world where often there are too many variables to juggle. And so we need to move beyond uh, what's often called instrumental ways of thinking, as if life's a kind of checkbox. Um, and try and really think about our character and to think about uh, what it might be to cultivate a more virtuous kind of life. I think that's right. You can never be reduced to a science for the very reason you're given that there are so many variables. And we're all so utterly different, so there can't be general prescriptions. One of the interesting things I think about the series is, first of all, it's very accessible. It's meant for people who perhaps haven't read philosophy before or haven't looked at philosophy for illumination. It covers topics that are not normally picked up by philosophers, things that are taken far much, too much for granted, although they fill our lives, clothes, illness, well-being, and so on. And I think for that kind of reason, potentially, it may be a significant contribution to improving the nation's ability to live artfully. Yeah, someone said to me um, when I w we were getting it together that a bit like you can write a poem about anything, in principle you can say some philosophy about anything. Um, and I think also what I hope we're trying to do is, we are doing philosophy as in trying to think more clearly and to see more clearly. Um, but. Uh, in the academic world, that's often an end in itself. You know, an academic mm. philosopher will think, I've got a proof that no one can refute, and that's yeah. kind of like the end of philosophy. And I think what we're saying in these essays is um, that actually the end of philosophy is the good life itself, or at least uh, a life that's better as a result of reflection. Um, thinking clearly serves a higher end. I think that's true. I mean, the law of diminishing footnotes seems to apply to a lot of academic philosophy. It doesn't seem to relate back to the lives of the philosophers themselves or those whom they would teach. But, and it's true what you say also, that you can do philosophy or unpack serious philosophical themes from pretty well anything. Just as William Cooper was famously challenged to write a poem on the sofa and what wrote one of the great English poems, so you could almost unpack an awful lot of major philosophical discourse from uh, some very simple things. I, I like the thought too that Socrates was perhaps best known for not wearing shoes in ancient Athens as he was for the clarity of his thought and certainly for myself I think there's a lot of inspiration goes back to that you know the fact that Plato wrote dialogues wasn't just a kind of an artful uh, conjuring trick but he actually thought that uh, philosophy should spring from life should spring from experience and if it doesn't um, then in some ways it invalidates it even. He also thought philosophy should be interesting and that it wasn't sufficient to have a sort of dense succession of proofs or arguments that you had to dramatise it, to make it interesting, to engage people's emotions as well as their intellect. I think another facet which I have a sense of is that we live in an age where people um, obviously read self-help, for example, because uh, self-help sells a lot of books, but maybe they find it uh, often a little trivial. Um, people um, maybe admire religions a little bit, but then they find that uh, there's too much uh, metaphysical baggage that comes with it and they can't quite commit. Um, they might look to philosophy, but they fear that uh, it is going to be impenetrable. And so by uh, asking people to write from their experience uh, with some philosophical knowledge, but to take some risks with the writing, um, to really ex try and uh, capture something of themselves in the books as well, um, that might be a, a way of opening up um, some, some middle ground in between these other ways of addressing the questions of life. And in many ways, the faith behind the series, I guess, is the idea that if you reflect on those things that have you in their possession, you can be at least in part liberated from them. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I hope we're not uh, um, sort of uh, embarrassed by that. We don't flinch between, you know, the idea that life um, you know, can be good and that words like uh, liberation and enlightenment and so on uh, are part of the philosophical currency and, uh, you know, they are the end uh, that, that many philosophers are aimed for. And it's interesting, I think it was Lord Acton once said you should learn as much from writing a book as from reading a book. And I guess all of the contributors to the series have learnt an awful lot about the, to the topics that they've been asked to write about, things that perhaps they weren't explicitly aware of before. I was certainly engaged with the question of happiness and well-being when I was writing it and trying to work something out for myself. Um, and the book you know, has helped me to do that. Well, I learnt a lot about my own hungers. I'm not too sure whether I'm able better to manage them. I hope I am. Ray, thanks very much for talking about the Art of Living series. I'm glad that it's inspired you as much as it really has inspired me. It's been a great pleasure talking to you and it's been a great pleasure being involved with the series. Thank you.